video, we're going to learn about how to write ionic formulas and names for ionic compounds containing polyatomic ions. And a polyatomic ion is exactly what it sounds like. It's poly, which means more than one, atomic meaning referring to atom, and ion meaning something with a charge. So you have a group of atoms that has a charge. And those are going to be covalently bound, and those bonds are really more permanent than the rest of the stuff in an ionic system. So there are a bunch of examples of these, and I'm just going to highlight a few. Ammonium is the only positive one. All right, it's the only cation that's a polyatomic ion. And it consists of four hydrogen atoms covalently bound to a nitrogen. It has more protons than electrons, and therefore has a positive one charge. We'll get into why that is in the next unit. Another example that I'm going to consider more of an exception to the rule is hydroxide, which is an oxygen atom bonded to a hydrogen that has an additional electron, so it has a negative charge. And really it's what you get if you have water and you have something remove a base, remove a hydrogen from the water, this would be what's left. And it's a very common ion that we use all the time, and we'll get to it a lot when we cover the acid-base unit. But most of the polyatomic ions don't end in eum or ide. Usually if something ends in ide, we're talking about a main group element in a binary ionic compound like phosphide, oxide. That refers to a singular element or monatomic ion, anion. Usually they end in ate or ite. So this is an example of phosphate. Phosphate has one phosphorus atom that's covalently linked to four oxygen atoms, of which three are negative. So it has an overall ionic charge of negative three. Phosphite has one less oxygen. Eight always has more O than I. So phosphite has one less oxygen, but it has the same charge. You have a phosphorus with three negatively charged oxygens covalently bonded, and those stay together. This don't go changing. We never change the formula of phosphate from PO4 to something else. You're never going to change phosphite from PO3 to something else. They stay what they are. Sulfate is another very common example it's in sulfuric acid battery acid. It's a good time. So it consists of a sulfur bonded to four oxygen atoms, and two of the oxygens have a negative one charge. So that's sulfate. Sulfite, again, I'd always having one less oxygen, is SO3 with a minus two charge. So these are examples of these polyatomic ions. Carbonate would be another example where you have carbon with three oxygens, two of them being negative, overall has a negative two charge. But how we handle them when we're writing formulas is very straightforward, and going back to the name is even easier. So this would be calcium phosphate. If I gave you this name, I would expect for you to be able to predict the formula, and here's how you would do it. Calcium, you know, is a main group element, plus two. If I gave you a transition metal, it would need a Roman numeral to tell you the charge. Phosphate is always negative three. So you have to find the ratio these two would combine in. Again, you need them to balance each other out. So you need the positive and negative charge to balance out. Calcium positive 2, negative 3, lowest common product you can get between those two numbers is 6. So you have to get the, the cation to positive 6, anion to negative 6. So I'm going to need 3 calciums and 2 phosphates to do that. Here is where a very common mistake happens. People constantly try to distribute this 2. No, 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 you can't do that. So if you want to say you have 2 phosphates, you put parentheses around it and then put the subscript 2. That means you have 2 of these phosphates. If you say P2O8, that implies something that looks more like an octopus than anything else and doesn't actually exist in real life. And you'll learn why in the next unit. Okay? The one other thing I want to add to this is 8 always has more oxygens than ite. But there is also a situation with chlorate where chlorate is ClO3 minus. Chlorite is ClO2 minus. There is also a hypochlorite, hypo meaning less than, where you have chlorine with one oxygen, and it still has a negative one charge. That's hypochlorite. And then you can have perchlorate, which is a very common ion, which is ClO4, has a negative one charge. Hyper, it's shortened to per, hyper meaning more than. Like, I have more than energy than I need. Okay, thank you.